So just outside of the prison of Andersonville lies the small town of Andersonville. And from what I've read and from what I've heard, they have a pretty epic uh, Civil War Museum here. So let's pay the Drummer Boy Museum a visit. So we just stepped inside and man, right off the bat. Now all these uniforms you're seeing are uh, completely authentic and right here you have a Civil War tabernacle that would have been used by Catholic chaplains in the field. Now as the army moved through different campaigns they would uh, attend mass services as well. And here's just a closer look at that Navy uniform. Wow. Okay. so. We're just inside, like I just said, and here is General Eckert's compass. Jeez. And uh, here's a few other random assortments of his, and including his eyeglasses. Wow. Okay, so right here, this is the bonnet of Mary Surratt. Now, she was one of the four conspirators who were involved in the assassination of President Lincoln. And she was, in fact, one of the first women to be executed by the U.S. government. This is fascinating to see. Oh, and no big deal. Right next to Mary Surratt's bonnet is a pair of gloves worn by President Grant uh, when he visited Japan on August 25th of 1879. And, of course, you can't have a Civil War museum without copious amounts of firearms here. And mini balls and other sorts of cartridges. And here's some of the uh, different variations of mini balls. And you can see they have a handful of these right here. Those are actually mini balls that hit each other in midair. Sometimes they're called rosebuds or rosettes. Um, but just an example of how much lead was flying in the air of a Civil War battlefield. And here's a few more back here. I'm, I'm just blown away by this collection so far. Now here we have a few artillery fuses and an artillery fuse cutter. Now, the longer the fuse, obviously the longer it would take for the shell to explode. And if you want the shell to explode uh, above the ground, you would cut the fuse shorter. And, oh, a bullet in the tree from Culp's Hill at Gettysburg. Wow. So here we have the sidearm of Captain Albert Wilbur of the 16th New York Cavalry, who was involved in the hunt for John Wilkes Booth. And here is a funky looking pistol here, a Navy model Savage 1860, 38 caliber. Just wanted to take a step back from one of the displays and just show you how packed these shelves are with just incredible artifacts. Let's see, right here we have, looks like a set of shackles that was used for prisoners, a signal lamp, a mess kit. Here's a few other items, a surgeon's amputation saw and what, a piece of jawbone with a bullet lodged inside found at Gettysburg. Are you kidding me? That is one of the most fascinating and morbid things I've seen. And here we have a hospital bullet and a Civil War syringe along with a whiskey floss set. Okay, well, I thought I had an impressive mini ball collection, but apparently not. This completely puts mine to shame. Jeez. So, like earlier I stated, all these uniforms you see before you, these are all 100% authentic, real uniforms. And here we have our standard Union infantryman wearing his Union blue with his Springfield musket and bayonet, his haversack, and uh, his Civil War cap there. And right next to him, this is a Union Zouave, who is also an infantryman. But the cool thing about this Zouave is it was called a Fire Zouave, and it was formed out of the fire companies in New York City. And one of the coolest things about the Fire Zouaves was they wore the badge of their fire company on their uniform. And I absolutely love this. So I haven't really seen a whole lot of Navy uniforms, but here's one up close of your standard Union sailor here. And they have a few artifacts here. Looks like this is a pulley from the USS Hartford and a powder keg from the Hartford here. And a few shells and round shot from the Hartford. 
So this is pretty neat. This is the guidon for the Tammany Regiment, also known as the 42nd New York Infantry. That's really cool. And back here is the regimental colors for the 3rd Maryland, and you can see those are bullet holes. And right here you would have an officer saddle, which would primarily be used by the Union Cavalry, at least this design. And I also wanted to show you the difference between what your standard infantryman would carry, your Springfield musket with bayonet, and what your standard cavalryman would carry. This is a Sharps breech loading rifle. It's still fired a single shot, but it can be loaded from the breech or the back of the rifle, which would give you a higher rate of fire. And while we're on the topic of cavalry, this right here is an actual uniform that would have been worn by Captain Albert Wilbur of the 16th New York Cavalry. Now we saw a sidearm earlier, and again, he was involved in the uh, capture of John Wilkes Booth. And this is his actual uniform, holster, cap box, and pistol pouch. Now this officer's chair caught my eye because it is the chair of Major John Appleton of A Company of the 54th Massachusetts Infantry Regiment. That is pretty cool. I always love seeing these as well. Here is a recruiting poster calling for 300 volunteers for the 3rd New York Infantry Regiment. And for two years, you get 263 bucks, and for one year, 113 bucks. making our way over to the other side of the museum here and here we have looks like a Union canteen that was found at Gettysburg this is how do they get all this stuff <laughs> and then a cannon wheel rim that was also found at Gettysburg here's a couple different uh, shells round shot Wow another lantern and this army revolver here was found at the bloody pond at Shiloh battlefield and then we have a bayonet right below that and continuing with the cavalry theme here, we have a bugle, sharps rifle, some gloves, and this is pretty interesting. This is a Burnside carbine, which was patented by Major General Ambrose Burnside, and uh, it would fire that weird looking round you see right there, and it was a 54 caliber brass cartridge. That is really interesting. I have never seen that before. And just for reference, here's a normal sharps cartridge. This museum also has a few Andersonville artifacts as well, and what we're looking at is crutches that were fastened and used by Union soldiers while in captivity here at Andersonville. Wow. So here we have a Civil War kepi, a Zouave officer's kepi actually, a couple mini balls next to that, some shoulder insignias, and right here is a Civil War period school book. Wow. And it looks like they were uh, having a lesson on the Golden Eagle. That is really cool to see. It's so unique as well. Now we're approaching uh, some of the Confederate uniforms here and what uh, they would have looked like. And here's your standard uh, infantry right here. You can see there was really no standardized uniform. Um, so they pretty much wore what they had. And you can see the, the stark differences between the Confederate infantry and the Union infantry. Sidearms are pretty similar. Usually the Confederates would have an Enfield rifle. And here's your Civil War drummer boy. Looks like from South Carolina, and this is the Zouave drummer boy. And uh, he sounded daily camp calls and went under fire. He would give military commands. Here's another version of uh, Confederate infantry here. And I like some of the detail that they put into this place as well. You can see his belt there. That would be, I'm assuming, Company K. So that would be one way that the units would identify each other. And if you ever visit this museum, don't forget to look down because I almost missed this 3-inch cohorn mortar this knapsack and this set of boots here. And remember, this is all authentic. That is so cool. And here's another artifact from Andersonville here. This is a section of the rail line that would have carried Union prisoners to this location. And here is a knapsack here with a bedroll on top. I'm trying to get a closer look. Does it say 1st Battalion, maybe? Or 1st Battery? Either way, it's pretty cool. And right next to that knapsack is the stirrups that were also found in Gettysburg. Who knew there were so many Gettysburg relics at Andersonville? 
It's, it's fascinating. And then here's your standard infantry rifle, percussion cap, and a Confederate canteen that was found at the Wilderness in 1864. And just below that, this is a wooden rifle that would have been used for training. That is interesting because that is the first time I've ever seen this. So visiting Andersonville prison is a must. And if you visit the prison, you need to visit this place as well. The Drummer Boy Museum in Andersonville. Incredible place, just packed full of Civil War relics from really the entire war. I thoroughly enjoyed my visit here today and I learned a ton. And uh, something to remember, this museum runs strictly off donations. So if you ever do visit, leave a donation so we can keep history alive. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one.